Hello and welcome to the second part of my most lovely and most marvelous series for the hip joints. My name is Alphonse, still Alphonse, nothing changed there. And we will start the second lesson by lying on the back. So please come to lie on your back. And as always, take a moment to arrive on the floor, just to let everything drop, let your legs fall apart. Just casually and your hands drop and your shoulders drop and your head drop. Let yourself drop to the floor. And the first movement then, as soon as you're lying or fully lying down, the first movement is to stand your left foot, very much like we did in the beginning of last lesson, to bring your left foot to stand and to draw your knee up towards over your belly and then just let your foot drop to the floor so that the foot is standing. You're almost stomping your foot to the floor with this technique. In the first lesson we did it with both feet at first and now it's only the left one. And if you want to observe the details, so you could look out, watch out for your right heel. When you lift your left leg, are you pressing down with your right heel or not? Is it more an action of flexion or an action of pressing down one foot while you lift the other? And then, once your left foot is standing, leave it standing. And the first movement in this position is we're going to tap with the forefoot on the floor as if there would be a rhythm or a beat to tap the foot to. So <laughs> tap your toes, the whole forefoot actually, against the rug, the carpet, against the floor. Keep your heel in place, don't move your heel, but instead move your forefoot a little bit to the left and to the right while you're tapping, like a little window wiping movement. So you tap with your forefoot a little bit more to the left and then with your forefoot a little bit more to the right. <laughs> and stop at any point. So if you feel a cramping coming on, just stop. You can extend your leg again, you can snap your the back of your knee against the floor. You can snap your whole left leg also in a wind window wiping motion to <laughs> snap the whole leg to counter upcoming cramping. We don't want that. Stop before it hurts. And then let's continue with the stomping and standing the foot. But this time we don't tap the forefoot. But this time tap with your heel. So keep your toes where they are and tap with your heel a little bit to the left and to the right. As if you would want to work the floor a little bit. The, the left side of the floor and the right side of the floor. You can move your heel, but mostly move your heel to the left and to the right. You can move your knee but mostly move your heel to the left and to the right. Before it was the forefoot, now it's the heel. Or as an alternative, you can stamp your whole foot a little bit, the entire foot, a little bit to the left and to the right and just work, <laughs> work the whole floor. How close can you come to your hip joint? How close can you bring your left foot to your left buttock? In, in stomping or how far can you place your left foot to your right leg in stomping or to the outside or downwards. What places can you reach with your left foot? And then Take a short break, extend your left leg. It's a little bit of a workout, isn't it? When your left leg is lying long, maybe it feels already a little bit different than your right one. 
you could turn your left leg in its entirety. So we're just playing with the left leg a little bit. Left leg to the outside and to the inside, rolling, standing the left foot, a little bit of stomping with the heel, stomping with the forefoot. And then what else do we have? A little bit of gripping, gripping with the toes. So can, can you do that? Like if you would grip a, a pen with your toes, so you can bring your attention to your big toe. So you're gripping with your big toe on the floor with the barrier of the big toe of your left foot or with the four other toes. You, you're like, <laughs> like trying to collect something from the floor, collect a towel, collect a mat, collect some coin with your left foot, with the toes of your left foot. And also you can try in different directions, at different places, play around a little bit, don't be static. We want to have a dynamic image of the leg, uh, a leg that can go anywhere uh, within its available range of movement. But when it can go to the left, it should also go to the left and go a little bit further away, a little bit closer. So play a little bit with these five or six movements we, we have in this section of the lesson. See what you can discover about yourself, your connection maybe with your breathing or with the right leg or with your neck. Just play, a, take a little bit of a couple of minutes, <laughs> seconds to play with these movements. And then let go of this. And if you're not in a break yet, then take a break now, take a rest. Just extend your left leg and have your left leg resting long downwards. Feel how you lie down now. If your pelvis is still the same or your pelvis is tilted a little bit to the left, how, how is it you perceive yourself right now And then we move to the second part in this lesson and bring your left foot to standing again. Yes, find a good spot. So maybe draw up your left knee over your belly and then push down or stamp down your left foot so that your left foot has a good, is in good standing, has a good standing. Yes, and press a little bit more with your left foot against the floor. And you will notice if you relax fully, so you relax with everything you have, you relax to the floor, but you push with your left foot against the floor and then keep your left knee towards the ceiling, somehow towards the ceiling. And if you do that, your pelvis will, the left side of your pelvis will lift and the pelvis, your pelvis will roll to the right. So, so that's, that's the movement. The left foot pushes against the floor, the pelvis rolls towards the right and of course when the pelvis rolls then the chest has to turn but keep your shoulders square on the floor. So let both shoulders, even the left shoulder, stay in contact with the floor and then use your hands to feel and to guide or to accompany your movements. And we will do a little bit of an anatomy lesson <laughs> a little bit of an anatomy class. So continue with this movement of rolling your pelvis to the right by pushing with your left foot against the floor. And with your hands, or one hand, try to find a pointy bit in the middle to the left side. So at, the, at your pelvis, in front to the left, there should be a, a bony pointy bit. So there's 
Greek and Latin names for that. That's the anterior superior iliac spine, like a little knob, a little knob in front. Use your hands, soft, soft fingers, soft fingertips to find this landmark. It's a bony, bony bit. And if you trace this landmark backwards, the iliac crest, a little rim, the rim of your pelvis goes to the back. Try to trace it as far as you can follow it. You improve our tracing skills. So how far you can feel, not so much a question of how good is our padding, <laughs> but how, how well and how softly we can feel and trace. Okay, so from the pointy part, this anterior superior iliac spine, we can also go to the right, trace to the right. So immediately to the right, there's, there seems to be like nothing, just a mushy area. And then when you continue, continue down, you will find bony parts again, the upper branch, the upper branch of the pubis. So that's a, that's a, like a bridge, a little bridge that runs across towards the opposite side and the opposite side, there's the same bone. So we're interested in, in this bony part to find, use your fingertips very softly, a bony part. So we have two bony parts and in between is like, is like a soft area. In between is like a, <laughs> a wiring duct. That's a little canal in which a lot of important lines um, flow or go. Lots of important supply lines, blood, uh, big blood vessels, so don't press down too hard or you will <laughs> squeeze the blood supply of your, of your leg. And also there's a very uh, famous muscle going down here. Do you know which one? That's the, the, the psoas runs through this uh, little wiring duct. So you could even palpate your psoas. Underneath the psoas, in this wiring duct, actually quite underneath it, you will find your hip joint. So, and then we will continue on the inside of the edge of the leg, on the inside of the leg to find parts of your pelvis. So we found the upper branch of the pubis and there's a lower branch of the pubis. Inside you will be able to find a, a bone, a bony part. If you don't find it, you have to make very soft fingers or maybe the next time you're taking a bath or taking a shower, you can explore this area better. I mean, we are all grown up here, aren't we? And I think it's important to, to know this area, to have a good image of this area. If you come around on the, on the lower end, you will be able to find your sitz bone, your, your sit bone, the ischial tuberosity, where, where we can sit. So that's really like the, the landmarks, the, the pelvis, the bony part, the, our structure, internal architectural structure of still of the torso, the pelvis. So that's not the leg. The leg, that's the big leg muscles in front and in the back, the quadriceps and the hamstrings. And then there's a big bone inside the femur. And in, in this exploration, I want you to get a good idea of what is your pelvis, what is your torso and what is your leg to make a distinction. And later you could look that up in an anatomy book or there's marvelous videos here on YouTube from really good anatomy teachers. But your approach I would suggest is like, like bird watching. In nature you spot a bird and you see which kind of feathers he has, the size of it, the sound of it, his voice, and then you look it up in a book. <laughs> uh, I would suggest like this, you find the structures first and, and then you look them up and then it's quite interesting to look them up. All right, that was our anatomy lesson and then extend your left leg again, wow, and, and feel how you feel. How is your image now? How is your feeling of lying down now? <laughs> Maybe it's, for, for me, it's a big difference, even though I've done this lesson so many times, it's a big difference between my left leg and my right leg. And also how you think about the leg, where does the leg end and where does your pelvis start or the other way around. All right, and then the 
third part of this lesson, please bring your left foot to stand again. And try it with your left hand, try to catch your right foot. So bend your right knee for this, bend your right knee and try to push your right foot in between the little bridge that is formed by, with your left leg from your left foot to your left buttocks. So maybe with your left hand you can catch your right foot and make this a movement. So don't just catch it and freeze, but catch it and move your right foot a little bit to the left and to the right and further down and further up and around. Keep your right knee close to the floor. That's the only thing. Keep the right knee close to the floor while you move your right foot on the floor, left and right. Just to have like a, a moving exploration, not, not a static catch. And then at some point, <laughs> if you arrange yourself, at some point start to push with your left foot again against the floor. So same movement as before, but this time your left hand is holding your right foot. Push with your left foot against the floor to roll your pelvis to the right the head, you can move the head to, as, as you want and you need to side bend a little bit of course and to twist a little bit. Follow your structure into this movement, follow yourself into this movement, just feel, observe, notice what can you feel when you, for the, for the wild ones, please make it a little bit smaller and slower, slow down and small down so you have a chance to, to feel. And, and still, don't freeze up. The right leg still can move in different positions. You can push here or you can put your left leg like we did before in different positions. So play with different setups, so to speak, to roll your pelvis to the right and to push the floor with your left foot in order to help the pelvis to roll to the right and to twist yourself and to roll yourself. And then let go again, extend your legs <laughs> and feel how it is. You're lying down now. Then again, stand your left foot. With your left hand, catch your right foot underneath your, behind your left knee. Keep the right knee on the floor. Return to the previous movement of pushing the floor with your left foot, rolling the pelvis to the right. But this time, do a little, take it further into an extension. So you not only push the floor with your left foot and roll the pelvis to the right, but lift your pelvis. So you form a bridge between your right knee and your right shoulder. So you extend your your left hip, you <laughs> start with a slight rolling movement and take this movement further until your pelvis is up in the air. You could slide your right hand underneath your pelvis and you form a bridge from your right knee up to your right shoulder and keep your left shoulder close to the floor. So don't roll to the side with your shoulder girdle, but keep your shoulders, keep them as always in this lesson, square on the floor and find this uh, movement or perform this movement, explore. That's better, explore this movement in various locations. Your left foot can grip, the toes can grip or you can tap and you can reposition your left foot. You can reposition your right foot. You can roll, you can twist and you extend your, your hip. to roll onto the right side or to come into a bridging, a very asymmetrical bridging situation. Okay, <laughs> and then let go again 
extend everything uh, <laughs> and enjoy the asymmetric <laughs> situation. So, <laughs> quite asymmetric maybe. So this is the, welcome to the middle of the lesson. So you could, you could get up if you like, you could stop the lesson here, get up and stomp your left foot in standing. You can get up, stomp your left foot, you can have your right leg fly out behind you, stomp and walk and feel how it is because there might be quite a difference and you might feel a strength in stomping, a strength in walking, a, a new way of using your hip joint. <sighs> could be marvelous. Or you could rest, <laughs> take the lazy route, lying down a little bit. And then we do the other side. So uh, please bring your right foot to stand softly. Stomp. So lift your right knee, bring it over your chest, let your right foot drop to the floor. And then we had this business with tapping with the toes of your right foot in a motion from the left to the right, like a window wiper. Wiper, wiper, or the toes stay in place and you tap with the heel of your right foot. And at any time you can take a break or extend your leg. And then we had another motion, which is gripping, gripping with the right toes. And it's a difference if you think of the big right toe or the small right toe or the other toes or all the toes. And in which direction do you grip? So you can grip a little bit more to the left or to the right. We have stomping, putting the foot in many different places, or extending the right leg and bouncing the back of the knee against the floor and <laughs> moving the long right leg inside, outside, like a gigantic window wiper, or rolling the right leg right and left. So play a little bit with these movements, or with your right leg this time. And then at some point extend your right leg. Take a short break with your right leg and stand your right foot again. And then try to find this pointy bit. We do a little bit of anatomy on this side as well. Find the pointy bit on your right side on the hip. The anterior superior iliac spine and where it leads to, where can you trace it on the outside, on the inside the upper branch of the pubis and the little wiring, <laughs> wiring duct where you have your blood supply and the psoas and the iliacus and uh, big nerves, lots of stuff in there. And then try to trace the bones, the bony parts to the lower branch. It's quite surprising where there's bones, where, the, where they are. How, how does this actually feel like? So my, I give you my leave to, to touch around your leg, to trace around the base of your leg and, and see what bones you find there. The sit bone and the lower branch, the ramus, <laughs> and this ischial tuberosity. Or maybe, maybe even the greater Trochanter on the right side. What do you find when you do this 
movement of pushing with your right foot against the floor, roll the pelvis to the left and, and trace, trace the bony bits of your pelvis to get an image, an internal image of what is your pelvis, what is your torso and what is your leg and how do they connect. And then at some point take a rest again. Ah, okay, now for me it's even out. Finally, <laughs> this is like makes a strong change, a strong connection from, from, the, from the shoulders actually down, down to, the, to the feet. And the hip joints are in the middle. The hip joints are the players in the middle that connect up and uh, the upper part and the lower part. So then bring your right foot to stand again. And with your right hand, try to catch your left foot. So bend your left knee, keep your left knee on the floor. And where is, where is your left foot? Can you find it with your right hand? And again, we don't stay in a static position. It's not like cottage victory, but try to catch your left foot with your right hand and then move the left foot a little bit left and right so you really have to twist yourself and side bend yourself or maybe you can catch your socks or something with your right hand your left foot and move your left foot in and out keep your left knee on the floor and you can reposition your right foot so <laughs> do that as well your right foot stomp your right foot see where is a good location for your right foot to push against the floor so you can roll the pelvis to the left and, and back again. So these are the movements. <coughs> Reposition, push and roll. And when you keep your right knee towards the ceiling, then you have an opening of your right hip joint. And if you don't keep your right knee to the ceiling while you roll your pelvis, then you don't have an opening of the right hip joint. So that's why you, I suggest to keep the right knee pointing somewhat to the ceiling, at least when you push and roll. And while you're doing this, you might find that the more you're doing this, you can tighten it up a little bit. You can pull your left foot closer to your buttocks and you can position your right foot in ever so better positions to make this mechanically more efficient and stronger. And then <laughs> extend, take a short break, extend your legs, extend your arms, how, how is it in the middle of the back? I, I, I feel that now. The middle of the back really flattened to the floor. It's like an area I usually don't feel touching the ground so much, but now it does. Hmm. Interesting observation on my side. Okay, one last time. Stand your right foot for this side and with the right hand catch your left foot underneath the bridge. Yes. And again, don't stay static. Keep this a dynamic posture. Then push with your right foot against the floor. So to roll your pelvis to the left and extend your right, what is it? The, the, the right hip joint. So your pelvis actually lifts off the floor. <laughs> if you feel a cramping coming on, let go immediately. Don't <laughs> work into a cramping situation, would be a big mistake. So right foot pushes on the floor, pelvis rolls to the left, you come onto your left knee and all the, the pelvis almost lifts off the floor. And you have a bridge from your left knee to your left shoulder and keep the right shoulder on the floor as well. The cramping, I think, is because it's so unusual and the nervous system is not used to make, to release there and contract there. 
and it's a new situation, new learning. And so you will find that after you did it a couple of times, the cramps, the cramping does not come anymore because it's a, it's a learning situation, um, a self-organization and improvement and upgrade, a system upgrade. And again, if you are a wild one, then also try to make it very, very slow and small so you can explore the details. And it can, you can actually discover things you would not discover when you're loud and fast and strong. But so maybe there's two sides to it. Maybe if you're always very small and very quiet, then try to make it fast and, and big and strong and if you always big and fast and strong make it a small and delicate and light And then it's time to say goodbye to this quite marvelous movement and extend your legs and come to lie on your back and feel again. So this is a time where you could get up and see how it is to stomp with your right foot or let's continue to the last part synthesis to <laughs> stand both feet. So lift both knees and stand both feet. So we had this in the first lesson, different techniques for that. But how is it now? How do you perceive this movement after this lesson to draw up your knees and stand your feet? And then instead of just lifting one hip joint, lift both hip joints. So when both feet when both, feet, when both feet are standing, once they're standing, lift your pelvis up towards the ceiling. So extension, again, both shoulders stay on the floor. And make this a more violent movement. So you draw up your knees over your belly, so the feet are in the air, and then you stomp your feet down and lift your pelvis. <laughs> Lift your pelvis and don't hit the floor with your heels or with your toes, but allow the feet to come down flat to lift the pelvis. So maybe you remember quite a long time ago, you were fresh, you were newborn, maybe a couple of months old, and your mom will remember this movement. You have been doing this, a fun movement. You have been doing this for quite a bit. I, I hope you were allowed to <laughs> to stomp and lift to organize the extension of your hip joints. Yay, up in the air with one leg and two legs. <laughs> Greetings to the neighbors. Yes? Okay. <laughs> All right, so, and then take a last break. See how it is to lie down now. Hmm. Okay, so all that is left to do is to get up and try these movements in standing. How does this translate to standing? So please roll over aside and come up to stand. <laughs> yes? And, and see how it, is, how it is to stomp, to take a step with your 
left foot. Let's take a step with your right foot. <laughs> How easy it is to draw up the knee how easy it is to push down the foot and how safe it feels to push down the foot. The full contact with your foot on the floor. Or to push down the left foot and let the right leg fly out backwards. Or push down with the right leg and let the left leg fly out backwards. <laughs> Just to play with stomping and walking. After we worked on this connection between the feet and the shoulders and getting to know the hip joints and the shape of the pelvis and where are the bones and <laughs> how we can put pressure on the floor with the feet. Yes. <laughs> so I hope that was a good lesson for you. Hope it was fun. Hope you learned something and I hope you feel great. And thank you for watching. See you in the next video.